Welcome to the Denton Vibe with Diva Girl Ellie, powered in part by Classic of Denton. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us today or tonight on the DentonRadio.com with, uh, well, the Diva. The, the, my goodness, I butchered that Here we one. go. <laughs> here we go. The Denton Vibe with Diva Girl Ellie. I am sitting here reading screens, and I shouldn't be doing that. So today we have a wonderful, wonderful artist that I saw his painting hanging somewhere here in town, and it just left such an impression on me. And so we'll be showing you that image later on. But Hades Ferotovich. Close, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being here. I'm so glad to have you here, and we want to know who you are. We want to learn about you and about your art and just hear more about you. So um, go ahead and Yeah, talk of course. Uh, it's a pleasure, first off, to be on here. It's a pleasure to meet you and the crew here. Yes. Um, to start off, uh, my painting has actually been somewhat of a random hobby career that I started mm -hmm. about a maybe a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I always used to sketch, um, draw, look at things, kind of copy, paste, uh, if you will, kind of with like a pen on paper. Mm -hmm. um, and then kind of dropped it for a while, didn't really progress with it more. And then uh, once I started really going deep into school, I was a psychology major at UNT. Mm -hmm. um, chemistry, then psychology, mm -hmm. uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, uh, with that being said, I realized that I started sketching more and sometimes during lectures, of course, probably not recommended. But uh, with that being said, while I was sketching, I realized it was clearing my head. It was kind of helping me kind of work with everything that I was, you know, going through, whether it was school mm -hmm. or family or anything like that. Stress. Yeah. Any, <laughs> any kind of stress. It just helped. And it was simple and it was healthy. And, you know, a sketch would be five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had a guess a certain period of time where things weren't exactly the best mm -hmm. and my headspace was just a little bit off mm -hmm. and uh i realized that i had a gift card from michael's and, I said, awesome. and I said you know what <laughs> i was like i am terrible at painting i have no idea how this works but i'm going to buy some oil paints so i bought one of those uh small little kits yeah. and uh actually on one of the uh, what was posted on the instagram um, the first painting with the red tie mm -hmm. and the blue suit, mm -hmm. uh, that was my first painting ever nice. with oils. Um, I literally threw a, I want to say it was a 30 by 40 canvas, uh, similar to this size and just threw it on my living room table. Uh, it was spring break. All my, can all my plans had gotten canceled or I was ditched. It just like, it was a mess. So I said, you know what? I'm going to get a six pack of beer. Yeah. I'm going to set that down. I'm going to get this cam this canvas out and just see what I can do. Um, I have an artist that I found, uh, and his name is Eric Lacombe, mm -hmm. and he does oils. And, I mean, he does uh, everything from ink to oils to glue, I mean, all kinds of different mediums. And uh, that's kind of the inspiration I used on that first painting. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I started, you know, one of my good friends, they gave me a huge... A uh, pack of oil paints. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like a candy shop for me. I had, yeah. uh, I want to say, three to four free canvases, which free art supplies is just yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's always a plus. Exactly. <laughs> it's and, expensive. Uh, <laughs> very. Oils are very expensive, yeah. uh, especially with how I paint. I paint uh, with really thick textures. I like mm -hmm. to emphasize on textures and flow of the paint and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And I finger paint, mm -hmm. um, which people, they're always like, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, I put a glove on. Yeah. And I just it's do the thing. Yeah. And uh, so uh, from there, a couple months down the road, started posting, you know, the stuff on Facebook, just, you know, hey, mm -hmm. guys, I just did this. And then someone uh, messaged me and they were like, hey, how much is that painting? Oh, wow. And um, I was really confused because I was like, well, uh, what? <laughs> and uh, they said, yeah, like, I want I want to buy your painting. I said, oh, OK. <laughs> uh, so I just I threw out a number. I was like, I don't know, like, you know, hundred dollars. And he was like, oh, that's it. And I was like, I mean, sure. Sold that. And then, uh, you know, one thing led to another. Uh, I met a friend and that friend was friend with uh, Mason During. Mm -hmm. And he is uh, basically really high up, if not the head or one of the main reasons why Denton Gallery is what it is at the moment, nice. uh, which was a pleasure to meet him. Uh, shout out to Mason and Quana. Y'all do amazing. Same with Rita. I love you all. 
um Very with nice. that with that being said uh he asked me if i wanted to be a part of an exhibition mm -hmm. and that was my first event ever um it was at uh harvest house oh nice and um i sold my first painting uh my first i guess exhibition painting Very uh, cool. so from then on i've just kind of stuck with uh you know communicating with mason and Quana mm -hmm. and denton gallery and mm -hmm. just kind of have continued kind of exploring um, my style, mm -hmm. I guess, of painting and, you know, my process and everything like that. Cause I've never, um, I've never been a part of, uh, an art class. Mm -hmm. The last art class I've been a part of was in high school. Mm -hmm. I think my senior year yeah. because I just needed a credit hour yeah. <laughs> uh, and they made me <laughs> the draw leaves class. and I didn't, you know, <laughs> uh, you didn't know back then you didn't have any feelings. So I, I mean, I had always, so on, in my family, uh, my dad always used to sketch and draw is mm -hmm. what he says. Uh, now with that being said, my grandmother, uh, paints professionally oh, nice. and she has like her own little studio and Very cool. uh, all that stuff. And my mom went to, uh, Boston university, mm -hmm. uh, for art. Nice. Um, so I guess you could say it ran in the family slightly. Yeah. Um, but it never really occurred to me. Yeah. Um, and, and even now, I mean, uh, whenever I paint stuff, it's it's spontaneous. First off, mm -hmm. uh, the topic or subject of what I paint is completely random. Is it really? Yeah. So there's no there's no actual structure to it. Mm -hmm. Similar to my mind, it just <laughs> kind of bounces around. Um, you know, it's just like so. This painting right here, I uh, I usually do a sketch before, mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually doing a like Instagram series. So mm -hmm. on my profile, I'm doing uh, 30 days. Uh, a daily sketch mm -hmm. so I'll do a daily sketch I'll post something and kind of keep everyone updated or explore a topic like uh, for example you know uh, anxiety mm -hmm. or um, the idea of even just kind of talking about what an animal is and what it means to me mm -hmm. and kind of going from there mm -hmm. and then from those sketches I intend on maybe taking a few of those and you know making a painting yeah I now you do see a lot of that nowadays especially on instagram you see them even on pinterest sometimes you see the challenges uh, you know i see it a lot as when i'm looking for photography and inspirations and and paintings as well sometimes i'll go on i i love to paint acrylic and so i will see little challenges on there i have never fully committed to a 30-day challenge it's uh -huh. really hard for me but i would think that there is some you know some discipline in that too to say you know what i'm going to produce something for this many days in a row and pulling something from that and then making a more vivid image i guess because sketches are different and and making the painting come from those you know sketchings and and whatnot i think that would be really cool now if i could dedicate myself to that i think it would be neat but yeah the 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 dis i guess you know the discipline of it is uh it it's formed mm -hmm. in in my eyes um Whenever I started the paintings, uh, I was like, oh, well, this is oil paint, so slap it on, and it takes, you know, a day or two to dry, and sometimes I'd come home and realize that it had dried, so <laughs> it was the struggle of learning, okay, well, I need to realize, you know, what, what timing is right, mm -hmm. what things I should be planting first mm -hmm. before I start stuff, because one thing I know about myself for a fact is that I get excited about things without looking into them completely, <laughs> and that's what I did with oil paints, um, so... With that, um, you know, the, the 30 day challenge is, is it did test me in the beginning because mm -hmm. I started doing it. And I go, Oh, you know, it was, I think it was eight o'clock at night one night and I went, Oh, I still need to do my sketch. So I, mm -hmm. you know, I got my, got my book out and started, you know, doodling or whatever. And, uh, I was actually, I was on the phone with my girlfriend and she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I got a sketch. I got to make my sketch. I got to keep up with, you know, pushing content. Cause now yeah. You know, there are artists all over the world, but mm -hmm. um, if you don't push your content, if you don't uh, show like a passion for what you do and kind of show that you're actually determined to have that discipline and kind of yeah. keep that static movement, mm -hmm. it helps a lot. It's very true. The, uh, just the other day, one of my uh, artist friends, Jody Pham, was online and she posted post a picture of your artwork, your favorite artwork of your own. Mm -hmm. And I posted a, a sketch that I had I had um, done a while back of my favorite um, comic artist, mm -hmm. Josh Howard. Okay. And she goes, I had no idea that you had art talent or something like that, she said. And I was like, that should tell me something. I'm not doing it enough, and I should 
do it more often. It's a talent, you know, that people have and they don't cultivate it. They don't nourish it. So I really admire that you're doing that challenge. And I, I would be interested to see what comes out of your. Yeah, I yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, no. definitely. Um, you know, it's even uh, I mean, even with this painting, for example, I uh, I originally had sketched uh like two tents like a couple of people around a campfire mm -hmm. and my sketches are extremely simple mm -hmm. um and i mean completely bare there's just a few lines a couple dots just something to, for me to use as a reference mm -hmm. um and you know then i put this together and uh it's beautiful thank you mm -hmm. i i really appreciate that um the thing that uh, usually blows people's minds is that I am colorblind as well. I heard about that, yeah. and I was I was hoping you would bring it up, and mm -hmm. I think that is just mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. Um, How do you do it? So, uh, it's kind of a a wonky story, really. I mean, with uh with my colorblindness, so it's proto Um, so what I try to explain to people is that. Um, it's not so much that I can't see color. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that red kind of disappears on me sometimes. Um, so the idea is that the red cones in my eyes are messed up. Mm -hmm. So if the lighting is just perfect, I can see red. Mm -hmm. Now, if the sun goes a certain way or I get a wrong angle or mm -hmm. it's kind of nighttime, mm -hmm. it just kind of meshes together. So whenever I paint, I have to either have lights, you know, Very right well, above. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to let me know. Or I have to wait until daylight, you know, to, uh, I guess, paint correctly. Mm -hmm. um, I 100% check my labels all the time. Do you really? Um, some of my paintings, I decided not to. Mm -hmm. uh, and my friends would be like, oh, well, you know, you've got orange grass. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, some of the ocean is purple. I said, okay. And they're like, and why is this blue? And I said, that's blue. <laughs> so it's... It's almost like an adventure in and of itself for each mm -hmm. canvas whenever I press that in because everything is by hand. Uh, the only time I use brushes or palette knives is if I'm using something on a very large scale, if mm -hmm. I want to make like a very large stroke. On this one specifically was purely hands. I was just going to ask you if you do them all like that then. Yeah, so uh, I have uh, like some of the things that were posted on there, uh, like my, I did a stormtrooper painting. I um, love that one. Thank you. Way, yes. uh, so I had my stormtrooper painting. I had the skull, and those I started with palette knives because mm -hmm. uh, really the only reason I started using them is because I got curious. Mm -hmm. I bought them, and I really loved the flow that you can create with them. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> um, so everything's still a learning process. Every every painting, you know, there's something new mm -hmm. um, that I've learned. Like shading is difficult, but um, yeah, no, finger painting is extremely gratifying. Um, it almost is therapeutic, mm -hmm. uh, just because the idea is you're pushing, you know, whatever emotion you have in your head or you know thought processes that you know didn't seem clear at the time but as you paint and as you kind of form something you mm -hmm. realize okay so this is actually completely normal this should be fine mm -hmm. and it you know it it helps i think that's so cool that not using a brush because i mean we're so used to using tools mm -hmm. and obviously paint is going to be a tool or whatever your oil paintings but to directly just use your hands and just go for it and end up with something just as magnificent as if somebody were to use a tool brush you know right. i think that's amazing and you know you you were talking about the fact that your paintings were random there was whatever's in your head and i know a lot of times people tend to be um as artists well i like to paint this niche of painting mm -hmm. and um and it's really cool because some people will have a whole beautiful niche gallery of whatever it is that they love painting and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But I do like the randomness too of being able to see one thing and then look at another one and you wouldn't correlate the two to the same artist. So right. it's, it's like a, you know, l like a lottery almost of yeah, art. Exactly. Yeah. I like to, and, and thank you. Um, I actually got to experience what other people realized um, at the grand opening for Studio E, mm -hmm. or yeah, the grand opening for Studio E, uh, and they had all of, uh, quite a bit of my art. I think mm -hmm. I'm about five to six pieces of mine. Yep. Now I, I had so. I had my skull painting, which is you know like a white back, very colorful, very mm -hmm. vibrant. Mm -hmm. And then you walk around the corner, and I had my two mountain landscapes, and yes. those are all very thick textured, very um, I guess shaded and mm -hmm. kind of like 
try to add some depth Mm -hmm. and then you walk around to the front entrance and you have the bear and that is my absolute favorite one thank you that's the one that i okay i love bears they're not my favorite animal per se but that painting was just so impactful it was to me and just looking at it i was like okay that bear symbolizes strength it symbolizes uh, just being fierce but in a very healthy strong you know leadership like way Mm -hmm. when i saw that it it didn't have any negative connotation i mean he's roaring the bear is roaring like full-blown roar it was just a beautiful painting it's the first thing you see when you walk into studio e it is very impactful painting i think i loved it and i wish i could take that home with me i appreciate that <laughs> so i really do that means it means a lot to it, hear it that. is a gorgeous piece and i really really and tigers are my favorite animals yeah my uh so it's actually kind of crazy my roommate um ended up buying that from me nice. uh because he had said he said hey he goes uh I have seen how much work you put into uh, that painting because that was my first ever 30 by 40 canvas. Um, I had never drawn a tiger. I always thought tigers were extremely intimidating to draw or paint uh, just because to me, if a line is off, Mm -hmm. I feel like I ruined the whole thing. Uh, The balance of their stripes, basically. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And I actually put the stripes on last. I, it was gorgeous outside one day uh it was about a week later after starting the painting and it was like 75 degrees not nice. windy or anything just pop that thing on my chair in the backyard and i painted for i think my roommate said about four hours mm-hmm. just straight just went at it and the, uh that was done by hand too uh yes ma'am very cool yeah no uh the uh bear was uh strictly hand the tiger was strictly hand uh, this is uh, most of them are uh yeah. the only time i use palette knives and actually, I'm a liar. Um, the <laughs> stars that I did actually uh, just like kind of like uh, basically with a really thin uh, paintbrush mm-hmm. and just literally tapped yeah. uh, the canvas to kind of give it that uh, that like starry night. It's beautiful. Where is this? I have no idea. It's just a place in your imagination. You know, it's been rainy and it, I felt like I've lived in the United Kingdom for the past three weeks because of how Denton's weather has been. So yes. um, I love camping. I love the outdoors. I love what it does for my head. I love what, you know, the feeling the that smells. you get from. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. exploring trails or I'm a rock climber as well. Very so cool. very adventurous, sometimes reckless. Uh, <laughs> and with that being said, um, I was just thinking about how I have not gone on a camping trip in a while mm-hmm. because it's just been so cold. No one wants to camp in 10 degree weather. No, um, I've done it. It's not fun. No, well, it's not, not 10 degree, but <laughs> I, uh, like it. I think the coldest I've camped in is probably, I want to say 20 degrees. And my girlfriend is a trooper for that because she camped with me. And usually yeah. people would say, I'm going to get in this car and I'm going to go home. Yeah. She needs a medal. Yeah. I no. remember the last time we went <coughs> camping, it was that cold. I was with my cousins, my sister. We all went to Dinosaur Valley, Mm -hmm. or was it Beaver's Bend? I don't remember. But it ended up raining so bad that our tent was flooding. It was it was just a nightmare. We had to get up and leave. Everybody had to leave camp. It was that bad. It was freezing too. So there's our camping stories. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. No, the camping camping horror stories. There's always one. Yes. But um, no. So I uh, I had never painted a. So with every painting that I do, um, I kind of create a challenge for myself. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, like the bear painting, for example, I had never drawn a painting mm-hmm. or a bear draw a painting, <laughs> never drawn a bear before. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had the canvas, I did a little sketch, a little outlining mm-hmm. and, um, you know, I just worked, uh, worked on the painting, did all kinds of textures, like on the nose, like snout area. It's mm-hmm. kind of like plucked while everything else is kind of brushed. Mm -hmm. Um, and I used to reserve everything to my pointer and like middle finger, maybe my thumb. And with the bear, I actually started to use full hand and actually like big sweeps and stuff like that. Um, but with this, uh, I had never done a nighttime, uh, or like a very calm landscape. There's Mm -hmm. usually a lot of textures, a lot of very robust, Mm -hmm. uh, shapes and stuff. And with this one, I wanted to make something that was calm. Mm-hmm. It um, is very calming. It's and and it, you can feel the glow of the fire. Obviously, do you have names for these by chance? Um, that's actually another funny thing. Uh, with Denton Gallery, whenever we had our first event, they mm-hmm. said, "Well, do you have names?" Mm-hmm. And I, for the tiger, I think I called it El Tigre. <laughs> uh, and then um, for the bear, I called it Power. Uh, the, uh, the names are 
also random. random. Yeah. yeah. I just, it's, it's what I feel mm-hmm. and that's what I stamp it on. And mm-hmm. then, um, you know, I have like simple stuff, like there's one with a big cliff, I call it cliff side mm-hmm. or, um, I'm trying to think of what else I have one where it's a, I have two miniatures that I did uh, Mm -hmm. as someone gave the canvases to me. I was, uh, I hurt my back Mm -hmm. really bad. Uh, rock climbing. Uh, (laughs) actually no. Um, well maybe that might've helped, but I, I, I box kickbox on Mm -hmm. the side as well. And just, I do a lot of stuff to stay active, Mm -hmm. but I get bored if I just lift. So I like to do different things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I had a, uh, bulging disc L4 L5 oh, wow. uh, it was hitting my left sciatic nerve so I couldn't lift my leg um, so I was inside quite a bit yeah um, and I needed the painting so mm-hmm. I painted a lot during that time mm-hmm. uh, a lot of learning a lot of patience mm-hmm. um, but with you know bringing it full circle back to the names you know I called one you know river sticks uh, and the other I want to say was just calm shorts because I wanted to calm myself down. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like I said in the very beginning where everything's very therapeutic, um, it all revolves back to, you know, a lot of the artists that I've seen have gone through something or, you know, have certain things that kind of push them in directions mm-hmm. towards, you know, a canvas mm-hmm. or a wooden board that they want to put art on mm-hmm. or just something to express themselves because that's, it's good for you. Yeah, it is very therapeutic. I, I say that quite a bit about all kinds of art. People, you know, who have never done it don't realize the power in the therapy that art brings. And um, I know it was so weird that you said that the first painting you did, you put the canvas on the the dinner table because that's exactly what I did. Mm-hmm. My very first painting, I was actually taking a, a class here at UNT, and it was an art appreciation teacher, and I wish I could remember her name. It was so long ago we mm-hmm. won't talk about how long ago it was um but like she, last year right yeah exactly um so she would challenge us and she, because of her teachings it made me and i had all the supplies there for years years and years and i finally put that canvas on the dinner table and i was it took me four hours mm-hmm. as well it was a really huge canvas and um I remember stepping back and thinking, oh, my goodness, I just did this. Mm -hmm. And it was just mind-blowing because I felt very – it was very soulful experience for being the first time, um, you know. And when I tend to get antsy with, with, you know, the crazy schedules or if there's something stressing me, I usually sit down. Every once in a blue moon, I'll go to east side. I'll take my canvas in a small easel, Mm -hmm. and I'll just sit there and paint. Um, And then I – tend to zone out i don't even realize there's a hundred or so people there and it just it's very calming to my soul you you get to go in your own world yes that's what it is uh and that's what i love about it because as much as i love you know going to different locations and meeting people Mm -hmm. and talking to people i also love honestly just kind of talking to myself Mm -hmm. and that's through Mm -hmm. you know the art and um it's it's been a great experience um learning and finding you know what my everything is when Mm -hmm. it comes to the paintings and people have asked me you know if if I wanted to try watercolors Mm -hmm. or uh, acrylics and I tried acrylics I don't understand them (laughs) uh watercolors are very cool um but my favorite is just those oils Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about just that thick texture that Mm -hmm. it has and the fact that you really do have to um kind of create a flow through it Mm -hmm. uh and i haven't really painted in public but i've always wanted to try maybe just getting like an easel out here on Mm -hmm. the square and just kind of doing that well we have an event coming up and we have live painters that we are having there if you want a space Oh, well, that would be <laughs> awesome. Oh, wait, I would love this? to have you. You know, we're doing the Lost Poet Lounge at Studio okay. E. So we are having live painters there, Iris Candelaria and Margarita Barrantes. So if you would like to be an, a live painter, if you're not committed on that date, obviously, you could come join us. We're going to have a great time, and that's our plug-in for Lost Poet Lounge. But we are going to be at Studio E. We're going to have a huge show, and we, you kind of knew about some of the details, but mm-hmm. we are having live painters that night. Huh. So that's, well, that's good to know. We should keep in contact. <laughs> yes, on that one. definitely. Um, yeah, no. And in this this month really has some pretty cool stuff, uh, more so towards the end uh, of March. Nice. Um, it looks like uh, on the 29th, we have the uh, art, the Denton Forum. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's going to have the Artist Enclave uh, and the Greater Denton Arts Council. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, there's going to be uh, 
I want to say not so much cri- uh, critiques, but more so uh, a lot of people pulled outside of mm-hmm, Denton mm-hmm. uh, in to kind of mesh and create that world of art that Denton Gallery wants to push. Yeah. Um, because they have some seriously talented artists. Yes, uh, I'm not do. sure how I am even close to considered Nix them, but if that's the case, I love it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and there is really some great talent to be shown. Uh, so I'm excited for that. Uh, I think that starts at seven o'clock for the Greater Denton Arts Council. Mm-hmm. And then I believe Studio E also has its thing on, mm-hmm. I want to say the 29th as well. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of stuff coming up. They so do. And we're actually going to bring them on the show. So we want to We want to talk about their stuff too. And, and they have a lot of uh, exciting things coming up in there. They are a studio gallery mm-hmm. and they, um, you know, had your stuff hanging out at their house or yeah. their, their gallery. And, um, that's where I saw it, and I'm, like, really glad that they're sharing the walls and mm-hmm. s- that the Denton Gallery is going to be providing the artwork for the Lost Poet Lounge. Yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm really Studio happy about e. that. Yeah, that's definitely neat. So there's so much going on. So what else What else do you have going on aside from that? That'll keep you busy, right, then? Yeah, <laughs> no. Uh, so I any other events? And it, it doesn't have to be Denton. I know a lot of the people that are here in Denton mm-hmm. venture out and, you know, so... So for me, um, as far as the art goes, Mm -hmm. uh, I've still kind of kept it in Denton. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, of course, being honored to be interviewed here is uh, (laughs) one of my accomplishments um, Mm -hmm. that I did not expect, definitely. Uh, It's the bear. Yeah. You have the bear to thank. (laughs) Yeah, I will thank the bear 100%. (laughs) Um, The ladies at Studio E were lovely, and uh, and they made my day when they told me that they wanted uh, the bear painting. I mean, well, maybe my week. It was great. Yeah. Um, that was a great experience. And, and af- with that being said, and with the start of that, that relationship with uh, Studio E and kind of more movement with Denton Gallery and uh, then becoming even more established in the mm-hmm. Denton community, I've kind of wanted to simply push with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I'm starting that daily sketch mm-hmm. uh, post because um, more traffic to the profile, more traffic to me, and mm-hmm. just kind of showing people, hey, you know, here's yeah. what I got. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started an Etsy shop oh, um, very cool. maybe three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I've finished my first commission piece. Very nice. Um, and that's a completely new experience for me as well. Yeah. Um, Whole other ballpark. Yeah, very. <laughs> uh, very different ballpark, but also very rewarding whenever mm-hmm. you create something that someone is literally willing to put it on their, on their walls at mm-hmm. home. And I think that's one of the beauties of uh, creating art is that like I get to give people technically you know like a, a piece of me yes definitely. um so I'm I'm pushing the Etsy shop I'm pushing my social media platforms uh just to see where where it'll go mm-hmm. um I love the whimsicalness of it if that's a word mm-hmm. um and I like going with the flow I'm not huge on planning mm-hmm. uh, I really um, just enjoy seeing, you know, uh, with how much work I put into something to see. See what happens. Yeah. And just kind of mm-hmm. see if it if it moves up, if it moves down, if, you know, someone, you know, catches, you know, it's caught attention from someone, for example, you know, and and the I guess the gradient that it's been going on lately has been very, very rewarding. Um, and I'm excited because I'll be in the events on the 29th and 31st. Mm-hmm. And then I want to say I got an email for another event, which was on April 3rd. And then there will be another event at Harvest House. Uh, nice. So I'll be um, working on a couple paintings, a couple more paintings uh, to go with Studio E's event, mm-hmm. uh, possibly that live painting. <laughs> um, we hope. <laughs> we hope. We can hope. Uh, I am more than okay with hoping. Um, and kind of see how March goes and then go from there. Um, maybe more commission pieces, maybe mm-hmm. movement towards the Dallas area. Mm-hmm. I mean, the opportunities are so huge because we have a computer in our hands. Yep. So, you know, there's so many people in so many locations, so many things that you can push, pull, prod, talk to, Definitely. grow. And I love it. I think you're going to do just fine with all of the above. And so if someone wants to contact you, how do they get a hold of you for a commission or if they want to participate in something you're involved with? Where are they going to find you? So um, I have three uh, different social platforms. Um, you can find me on my Instagram profile, which mm-hmm. is just young underscore. And it's actually Burko is what it's supposed to be. Uh, it's supposed to be called. 
uh, or pronounced as, and it just means beard. Mm-hmm. So it's just a little twist on words. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that being said, my Instagram profile is a business profile. Mm-hmm. Um, so people can hit the button that just says email. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll take questions for commissions on via email, via Instagram, mm-hmm. direct messaging, Snapchat, if you add me on that, okay. um, or even my Facebook uh, page which uh, my Instagram and my Facebook page are all connected to my Etsy shop. Okay. Um, So people can look at my listings on there. Um, They can go on my Facebook page, which is uh, Hadi Svaratovich Art, Mm -hmm. uh, just all in one word, nice and easy. Okay. Um, And those are my platforms. I have three platforms. I don't have a Twitter. (laughs) Um, I I don't understand the bird. (laughs) I don't either. (laughs) And it's, it's, you know, and uh, (laughs) with that being said, if I don't understand a social platform, I don't really know how to push on it. So um, those are my three. Uh, I think they're pretty solid. Uh, I have a good amount to begin with Mm -hmm. and this all the social media platforms are fairly new as Mm -hmm. well so i'm still learning that Mm -hmm. um but it's it's fantastic and if people want to contact me um all of my information is on each uh Mm -hmm. social media platform and what were the names again just to make sure so on the instagram it's uh young it's y-u-n-g underscore b-r-k-o Mm-hmm. Um, and then my Facebook page is Hadi Svratovich Art. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my Etsy is uh, Paintings by Hadis. And okay. that's uh, no space. Okay. So um, that's where you're going to find him, guys. You guys go check out his work. I know that the Denton Vibe will have your links, um, obviously, this this uh, broadcast and mm-hmm. whatnot. But you can find his links there as well. And um, thank you so much for coming and sharing your artwork, sharing your story. I hope... I hope we get to work with you at the event for the Lost Poet Lounge at Studio E. That would be really cool. And I if not, so we too. can take you into the, the future. But I see you growing in many directions with everything that you mentioned. I do want to say a quick shout out to my new coordinator, social media coordinator, Angelica Fraga. Thank you so <laughs> much for joining Team Diva on the Denton Vibe. And thank you guys for being here uh, yet again to share all of the talent that we have here in Denton. Thank you so much for joining us on the Denton Vibe. We'll see you next week here on DentonRadio.com. Well, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out DentonRadio.com for new Denton artists and where they're playing next. While you're surfing the Internet, make sure you check out our friends Classic of Denton at ClassicofDenton.com.